We now return to the real Ghostbusters. Must be Janine Melnitz. Well, if I must, I must. Though all things considered, I'd rather be Meryl Streep. But then, wouldn't we all? Uh, wait a minute. Can we start this over again? I'm Cynthia Crawford with UBN News. I'm here to interview Dr. Peter Venkman. Oh, of course. He's waiting for you upstairs. Thank you. I'm sorry, but you can't go up there. But you just said... I know what I said, but you can't go up there. 30, 29, 28. Look, I don't know what your game is, but I'm a reporter. I have an interview with Dr. Venkman, and I'm going up there, all right? 13, 12, 11, 10. Are you listening to a word I'm saying? 4, 3, 2, 1. Yeah. Now you can go upstairs. <sighs> nice one, Egon. I think you took out most of Bayonne with that one. Would you like to try for the Bronx this time? Hey, I was born in the Bronx. I'd say that was a good enough reason, wouldn't you? Ouch! You know, I wish you guys would figure out what this thing's supposed to be. If I'm going to be disintegrated, I'd at least like to know by what. Hello? Uh, hi. I I'm Cynthia Crawford with UBN News. You must be Dr. Peter Venkman. Well, if I must, I must. But I'd much rather be... If you don't mind, I've already driven off that bridge once already. Uh, can we go somewhere and talk? Sorry, gentlemen, but my public calls. Perhaps we can continue this later. Ta! And then in third grade, I got in a fight with this guy named Rick. Big guy. Big muscles. Brains of a trout. Dr. Venkman. When I said I wanted to do a pre-interview for a segment on the history of the Ghostbusters, this isn't quite what I had in mind. I mean, there's so much the public doesn't know about you. What you do in your spare time, where you came from. Not much to say. Ray's home is in the Bronx. Make that was in the Bronx. <gasps> oh, no! Oh, and, and this must be Slimer. Well, <laughs> Skip it, Slimer. She's heard it. Huh. And that's another thing. Isn't it a bit strange for a bunch of Ghostbusters to have a ghost living with them? Strange, weird, eccentric, sick. That about covers it. <clears throat> but there are some good reasons, some very, very good reasons why he's here. It all happened right after our biggest case. We just stopped Gozer the Gazarian from flattening the world, though too late to save our headquarters. No two ways about it. This place is a mess. Hey, no problem. We'll just fix the place up better than before, right? Oh, yeah, man. right. What sure, a piece of cake. The second order of business is to rebuild the containment grid so we'll have some place to put the ghosts. Whoa. This time, I think I'll make it bigger. Okay, Egon, I'll bite. What's the first thing we have to do? Get rid of our uniforms. They absorbed a frightening amount of psychokinetic energy during our battle with Gozer. They'll have to be destroyed. Hey, guys, huh? you're in luck. In all the confusion, I forgot to tell you. This came in just before you went up to fight Gozer. <laughs> it's your new uniforms. Great, huh? They'll do. I suggest you all change as quickly as possible. The sooner we're away from the PKE contamination, the better. That was where all the trouble started. We're not entirely sure what happened next, but here's what we pieced together. Transstator? Check. Field generator? Check. Ionization decay meter? Check. Plasmatic refractor? Anti-ectoplasm destruct mechanism? Bipolar adjuster? Check, check, and... <sighs> check. Transwarp drive? Check. Aha! Caught you! We don't have a transwarp drive. If we don't have one, then it can't malfunction. 
If it's not malfunctioning, then nothing's wrong. And if nothing's wrong, then it checks, right? I'm not going to talk to you again for at least a week. It's not good for me. Hey, don't make fun. This is how I got through college. By the way, Peter, did you remember to burn those old uniforms like I asked you? Oh, yeah, sure, no problem. Just gotta remember to take care of this stuff later. We never figured how, but our uniforms with all that leftover ghost energy got stored next to the containment unit. Worse yet, there was one last crack in the containment field we hadn't found yet. Energy was seeping out steadily, and the old uniforms absorbed it. After a while, we forgot about it in the rush to rebuild the firehouse, but we had the strangest feeling. Like we were being watched. Then, finally, we found out who it was. Gentlemen, Janine, a toast. To our first night back in the firehouse. To the firehouse! To the firehouse! Oh, So, who wants stuffing? Oh, yum, yum. Oh, it's stuffing. What the heck is that? Can't be the plumbing, I just fixed it. Gentlemen, something's here. And it's right over there. It's him! It's the one who slimed me at the hotel! Get him! He's over here! Get him! Winston, you and Ray go after him! He's under Janine's desk! Egon and I'll get him if he tries to come upstairs. Check, check. There he is. Get him. We lost him. No problem. He'll show up again. Right, Egon? Probably. It's curious, though. When the containment unit exploded, he should have escaped with the rest of the ghosts. But he decided to stay here. Why? Free food? He wants another shot at me, that's all. Maybe he's just lonely. And you guys are the first people who ever paid any attention to him. Nah. Nah. Whatever the reason, we ended up seeing a lot of Slimer over the next few days. Naturally, we all reacted to Slimer in our own unique ways. My name is Dr. Egon Spengler. I'm a scientist. If you don't mind, I'd like to study you. You could be of tremendous use to science, since I can't study the other ghosts in the containment unit up close. Now, if you'll just open wide, this won't hurt a bit. Now, say ah. That will be all. Thank you. Crescent wrench. Crescent wrench. Ratchet. Ratchet. Tease up. Be right back. What? Screwdriver. Wait a minute. This isn't. Oh, hi there, little fella. You know, with a little training, I bet you could become a first rate mechanic. Yeah. I'll bet I could train you to do all kinds of stuff. Fetch! Oh, really? 
There he is, Ray. See, I told you, he tried to sneak up on me. Okay, where is he? Where'd he go? Where'd who go, Peter? You know, the green guy, the little spud, the, uh, whatever he is. Who? What? Where? Never mind, just keep your eyes open. That thing's a menace. You know, Peter's right. We need to give you a name. Just to annoy Peter, what say we call you Slimer? <laughs> what we didn't know, of course, was that there was an even bigger menace growing right beneath our noses. trying to get some sleep. I mean it, Peter. Cut it. Huh? Oh, guys, I think we've got no. trouble here. Big, big trouble. Oops. We now return to the real Ghostbusters. Can't we talk this over? Move! Let me Come on, whoa! catch them now. It might be just as well. We shouldn't go after them until we know what we're dealing with. What we're dealing with is us. Those things look just like us. Speak for yourself, Ray. I couldn't look that bad on a bet. Perhaps, but they were in our old uniforms. How is that possible? They were destroyed, weren't they? It didn't take long for us to figure out what had happened. As I suspected. The uniforms, already filled with ectoplasmic energy from our battle with Gozer, absorbed even more energy from the containment unit. Ectoplasm is like putty. The more you add, the bigger it gets. It was only a matter of time until it, well, literally woke up and walked away. But why do they look like us? Whenever you touch something, you leave a mental imprint, like a fingerprint. How'd this mess happen anyway? <laughs> Naturally, we agreed it was nobody's fault. It was just one of those things. We didn't see him again for several days. During that time, it was business as usual. We'd almost forgotten about them until one day. Okay, ghosties. Ollie Ollie Oxen Free, come on out. Dr. Venkman prescribes a nice long nap in the containment unit. Whoa! Hey! Who's the wise guy? My name is Dr. Peter Vinkman. No way. I'm Dr. Peter Vinkman. Got that? This town's only big enough for one Peter Vinkman. I agree. So one of us must go. Get out! Why do I say things like that? I always get in trouble.
What was that? Your destiny. Surrender. It is the only logical thing to do. Get in! We'd better move. My double lost track of me in the explosion, but he'll catch up fast. But where's Ray? <laughs> This is nuts! <laughs> All aboard! Yeah, it was worse than we thought. Bad enough we had four specters that looked like us. They wanted to be us. And the only way they could do that was get rid of the originals. Us. So the problem as I see it is that right now both sides are equal. We have proton packs. They have packs that shoot out very destructive ectoplasm. Yeah. Man, this job was a lot easier when these things didn't shoot back. So how do we defeat things that are armed as we are, who know what we know, who are in fact our doubles? I have two ideas. First, we can try to disarm them, but I don't know if their packs can be removed. The second alternative is tougher. They absorbed our energy to take on our forms. So logically, if we remove that energy, they'll disappear. And there's one final danger to consider. Let me guess, since these guys are just like us, they might think of the same thing. Exactly. Why do I have the feeling that I'm not going to have any fun in all this? Hey! Hey! I just tuned that! Our proton packs are in there. So let's get them. Maybe you ought to think that over. Egon, over there. The spare proton pack. It's our only chance. It would be. Okay, on three. You guys go that way. I'll get the pack. One, two, three. How do I get into these things? Oh. Good work, Peter. I... Oh, wait. I just remembered. It only has half a charge. Why didn't you mention this earlier? Well, that'll let us hold them off for a few minutes. After that... After that, we've had it. Here, fire at them, quickly! Keep firing! Now look at them, closely! See, each time they fire, they weaken! Of course! They're made of ectoplasmic energy. The more they use, the less they have. So all we have to do is get them to keep firing until they run out of energy. That's great, except I don't think we're gonna last that long. Unless... Unless one of us goes out there to draw their fire, weakening them enough for the rest of us to take them. Whoever does that might not come back. So who's going to be the one to do it? Who can we afford to lose? Oh, Janine. J just kidding, just kidding. Oh, no. You're coming in. No time left. I'll go. Slimer, what are you? Slimer, no! That's it, Slimer. Keep moving faster. Go, come on, on. Go. you can do it. That's it. You can do it. Go. Working. They're getting weaker. Way to go, Slimer. Slimer! You think Slimer used up enough of their energy? I don't know, but I think we're about to find out. Good night, fellas, because the real Ghostbusters are here to stay. We 
Got them. Now, the trap. Winston, my man. Do it. That's right, Peter. And he saved our lives. So what do you say? Can we keep him? He could be of immense scientific interest, Peter. <coughs> okay, okay. Just don't tell anybody I said so, okay? okay, okay. So I, uh, uh, that is, the others decided to keep Slime around for strictly scientific purposes. The rest, as they say, is history. Well, that's quite a tale, Dr. Venkman. I think I see how to handle my story now. Thanks ever so much. Anytime. Anytime. She's crazy about me, you know. And we have a warm front coming in from the north. A trough of I wonder what kind of story it'll be. Yeah. What kind of story can she tell? I mean, she only interviewed Peter. What can I say, fellas? I guess when she saw me, she saw all she needed. And now for our feature story, The Hidden History of the Ghostbusters. It's a fascinating look at what most of us may not know about our local heroes. In particular, our story tonight is about a real hero, a Ghostbuster among Ghostbusters. Aw, oh, shucks. I refer, of course, to that unsung member of the Ghostbusters, Slimer. Slimer? I never liked you. And this is my popcorn, Spud. Oh, well. Win some, lose some. We'll have more on this and other stories right after this word from our sponsor. <laughs> 